Happy New Year, chillers. We did it. We finally made it. It is now officially 2021, and this girl's pretty excited. Yeah, ring the bells, bang the drums. Really? That's what you're going to go with? I mean, yes. Okay, you're so weird sometimes, but you know, so am I. Like, obviously, we should probably post a blooper of what we just tried to do in our group. Because <laughs> let me tell you. Anyways, today is the first Tuesday of the year. Which brings you another episode of... True Crime and Chill Supernatural Style. Welcome to our first episode of 2021. Yes, 2020 is officially hindsight, and we can move forward to bigger and better things. Right? Speaking of bigger and better things, we did a thing. And I know whenever I say that, it usually means I did something to my hair, but not this time. (laughs) No, this time... We started a Patreon. We did, and it's awesome. So our patrons can get a shout-out in future episodes, have an episode written about their hometown, get access to exclusive content, um, like just like mini episodes or like update videos of us just talking about like the top true crime stories that have happened that month or something, um, yeah. and get some sweet swag. That's right. You can go check it out now at patreon.com slash true crime and chill pod. Okay, shall we get into this week's episode? Yeah, we can. Being the first episode of the month, we're continuing our State Urban Legends series. This week, we are actually starting from the top and bringing you a legend from Alabama, the Witch of Hines Road. One final thing to do before we get into it, let's do the disclaimer. Yes, okay, so obviously we're not paranormal experts, investigators, criminologists, yet, or any sort of law enforcement professionals. That's right, we're simply fans of true crime, just like you. And if you don't like us, don't listen to us. Bye, Felicia. But if you do like us, please make sure to subscribe and leave a comment on whatever platform you listen to us on. And remember, there's, I think, you know, there's two more weeks to get in on our drawing to, if you, so if you leave a comment and you tell us on our page or you message us or you tell us in our group that you can be added to. And if you leave a, uh, a review on either YouTube or Apple Podcasts or anywhere where you listen to us, you could be entered to win a Starbucks gift card. And if you're like me who like coffee, you always love free coffee. So get to it, people. And like coffee, your support keeps us going. So thank you, chillers. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, yes, let's. All right. Heinz Road is located in Gaston, Alabama. The legend goes a little something like this. In Gaston, Heinz Road is said to be haunted by the ghost of a woman who appears from the woods. The tale describes a witch who lived in the woods that surround the road. If you're brave enough to walk along the road at night, the ghost witch will rush up to you screaming she sold her soul to the devil. So basically the stereotypical witch story that you would normally hear. Yeah. Uh, And according to local legend, the witch of Hines Road lived in a tiny shack back in the woods off of the road. Legend says she went by the name Torbit and she sold her soul, like we said, to the devil. Hence her screaming it at people? Basically, yeah. Also, who names her kid Torbit? It could have just been the name she picked for herself as a witch, too. (laughs) But I don't know. Sounds like Torment, but not. It's like Kevin. (laughs) <laughs> apologize to any kevin's named out there <laughs> <laughs> um so it's said that she lived around the turn of the 19th century and for 20 years she intimidated citizens and in particular their children mostly those children silly enough to attempt up Heinz in search of her those that did seldom returned Ooh. It- It is said that she would kill them and drink and bathe in their blood to keep her young and then use the bones to decorate the outside of her shack. During these 20 years that the children went missing, the adults were far too afraid to venture up to Hines Road to call out the witch. Around 1939, the mayor of the time said that enough was enough. He sent a, well, it was a mob. He picked people from the town brave enough to confront her and he formed a posse and Mm. he sent them up to get her. What they found reportedly turned, and I quote, their hair white and drained all the blood from their faces. The first thing they found was a pond, or what would have been a pond, had it not been completely filled with blood, body parts, and still whole bodies of many children of many ages. Some of the corpses were on the shores surrounding the pond, 
And after overcoming the horrific sight, they ventured further up the winding dirt road. On the side of the road, they saw a cave with the foulest of stenches coming from it. One brave soul went in, and while he was in there, he let out a spine-shattering scream. He returned from the cave, stark white, and the man never spoke of what he saw. In fact, he never spoke again. No one else was brave enough to go in. Some of the brave men turned back from just these things. So a much smaller group went on to the cabin where they found her at the front door. They were amazed to see a beautiful young woman with long black hair and emerald eyes, naked and covered in blood. They're always naked. Right. Are you the one they call the witch Torbit? They asked her. It is I, she replied. And without hesitation, they threw their flames from their torches on her and her den of death. They watched as she burned and her cabin turned to ash. And as this all went on, it is said that those down in the city could hear her cackling laughter and see white hot flames and smoke rising from the mountain. Okay, so this really just kind of throws a lot at you because it really, like, you got, like, you know, the bigger fears of people, you got, like, missing children, beautiful women bathing in blood, (laughs) mysterious cave, like... It kind of just throws a lot at you and you're kind of just like, well, okay, then let's, let's do this. Like, (laughs) let's go. Like, okay. Like, I mean, I don't know. Nowadays, like with millennials, especially finding a woman bathing in blood in a cave, like they probably be like, eh, okay, whatever. Let's see where this leads us. Like, let's be real here. What what are you saying? Cause (laughs) I'm saying we don't care. (laughs) Well, what's interesting is that I struggle to find any accurate reports or accounts to back up the legend. This is unusual since it supposedly happened in the 1930s, but almost all sources I found lead back to hauntedplaces.org where I sifted through the comments. I watched a couple of videos of locals telling the legend that they heard, and one version said that it was in the 1800s and she had a three-year-old boy. They went and set her cabin on fire for witchcraft that she was doing in the cave. And they said that the witch and her son walked out of the cabin on fire with them on fire. They walked into the woods and they were never seen again, even though like people apparently searched for days for the corpses. And many people claimed uh, in this message board to be sensitive to things in the first few comments and said a second spirit supposedly haunted the woods, and they said it was small, like a child or an animal. And so, like I said, some of the legends say that her three-year-old son was also in the cabin when it burned down, but others say it's a big dog, quite possibly a hellhound. So, basically, it's just, I mean, okay, you got some dark, scary woods and stuff, and people are obviously going to think that something's going on in there. Like, Right. That's not, that. that's not a, uh, uh, what is it? But it's not a surprise. Like, that's been going on since the dawn of time. You got these yeah. big, scary woods, and then all of a sudden, like, something is going to rise from it. Like, you got that hermit that lives out in the middle of nowhere and stuff, and all of a sudden, they're a witch. Like, this woman could have just been minding her own business and just got assaulted or something. Like, fuck, like... Right. Well, and it could also just be a story to scare children, right? Exactly. Um, There have been lots of paranormal investigations along Hines Road, many of which are posted on YouTube, uh, and I watched a couple of them. Just some notes about the location itself. It's not a well-maintained, but it's, I mean, if it's not paved, it's really packed down gravel uh, throughout Mm -hmm. the forest, winding through and about wide enough for one car. Uh, There will be photos on the website, truecrimeandchill.com. But it's been obvious that there have been a lot of people up there. There was lots of trash on the side of the road, um, other items left behind, like shirts and stuff. Probably groups of people getting together to party, do drugs, and some are said to practice satanic rituals out there. The cave is now covered on the outside with graffiti. Um, But I think anyone who has any sort of knowledge about the, uh, the occult knows that they generally have a really deep respect for nature and wouldn't leave all that garbage around, at least not anyone serious about their craft. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I just, because it's like, I mean, let's be real here. Like, a lot of the witchcraft stuff back in the day was, like, women who were targeted because there was something that that they had that didn't fit in with normal society. Nine times out of ten, it was red hair. 
Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> or like they wanted to be by themselves or this girl was too pretty or like that person wanted to get back at their friend. Like, let's just like right. uh, and, and like if you like you like put a uh, you put like a, a woods along you put like the woods along with like that person like you're obviously going to get like this giant like ghost story and stuff and then all it takes is one person telling it for it to explode all over absolutely well and it it's interesting because even now like hearing the stories people talk about it now they'll say oh you know I went up there but they'll say something along the lines of you know they were stopped by groups of people usually it's cults or satanists and it's interesting that they sound more afraid of the cults and Satanists than they do of the ghost of the supposed witch. So. Yeah. Well, cause like, I mean, I know like with like, cause like we have uh, outside of Squim, we have blue mountain schoolhouse and cemetery and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And there are so many stories that surround that. Like there's a story about how like there was a janitor who killed all the kids in the schoolhouse and everything. And like, if you're out there during witching hour, like he could get you or like, if you're out there during witching hour, like you can hear the kids in the woods begging you to come play with them. And if you go, you'll never leave. Or like, or like, like when you go to leave, and you'll see like actual kid handprints on your windshield and stuff. And like yep. all this, like it's just all this stuff. Like there's the fact that like there's a road right next to it that's called Goa Way. Yep. G O A W A Y. Goa yep. Way. And you're sitting there like, what? Yep. So it's like, and don't get me wrong, I have been one of those people that were up there like at night during the witching hour and being in a schoolhouse that's right next to the graveyard and stuff. It's, pretty freaking scary and your mind does play tricks on you i'm right. not saying there's not such thing as like ghosts or supernatural stuff out there because i wholeheartedly believe in that kind of stuff because it's like uh there's some things you can't explain however i do believe that the mind does play a big trick on you when you are in a situation where it just it feeds the atmosphere like obviously me sitting in this room right now i'm not gonna think oh my god there's a ghost in here but like if you put me out in the middle of the woods with nothing but a flashlight and i start hearing noises like i'm gonna think something's out there right exactly uh some of the more common haunting stories from this particular legend involve seeing a shack and then returning later to not see it or any foundation that it should have been on Mm -hmm. Also stories about cars having issues, lights flickering, radio acting weird. And then if they've turned the car off, the car taking a while to start back up. Like they sometimes have to wait up to 15 minutes in order to get the car to start. Um, many of the stories, like I said, surround the occult happenings up there. They swear it's overrun with Satan worshiping cults who sacrifice animals for their practice. Oh, there fun. were a few comments on hauntedplaces.org that I want to read because I felt they best describe some of the experience that people have had there. Um, also, the hauntedplaces.org is a really good place to like read up on urban legends of like different states and towns and cities and all that stuff. So, well, and like I said, most places that I was finding, like trying to find information, almost all of them ended up coming back mm -hmm. to, they, they would have a link to hauntedplaces.org. And the page for this surprisingly only had about, three sentences about the actual story but there yeah. were some really great comments and so i actually want to um read some of those out but um to counterbalance a lot of the comments that are saying you know oh um uh, you know this happened to me there were equally as many posts from people stating they had lived there or near there their whole lives and hadn't ever seen anything um many locals say the reason the cave smells so bad and continues to smell bad uh is coyotes bring their prey there to eat it and the smell is the rotting animal corpses. Though locals say they have ventured into the caves to find animal heads hanging from the ceiling, animals cut into pieces for rituals. The story is prominent enough in the area that a local politician running for mayor actually created a Blair Witch type video about trying to rid the town of the witch as a political move. Oh my God. This would only happen in Alabama. Like, I do have that video cited on our website, True Crime and Chill, by the way, if you want to see it. Like, this would happen in Alabama. Like, hey, guys, if you elect me as mayor, I'm going to get rid of this non-existent witch. Like, it wasn't even that. It was just a parody on the Blair Witch, but it was about the Heinz Road Witch. Dude, I do have to say, though, the Blair Witch Project scared the crap out of me when I first watched it because I thought oh, it yeah. was real. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, really no. Well, like, I can, really well done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, no, I can totally see, like, where, like the smells are and everything and stuff like that. Cause like, and also it's the woods. Okay. There's bound. It's the woods in Alabama. Like there's bound to be like wood people out there, like mountain people, you know, there are, there are some people that have lived on Heinz road. Um, 
not a lot though like it's a pretty backwoods area. yeah but the thing is is like again it's alabama it's yeah. the backwoods of alabama it, it, people are probably out there that don't want to be found like come on let's be real here like it's you know and homeless encampments and everything else exactly so, yeah. so that probably would explain why some of the um like why some of the the skeletons were hanging up because you know homeless people like do weird shit, but like it it's just it's like so that's that that's explainable the rotting co- cor- uh, corpse smell that's explainable because again like you said in the thing coyotes probably bring their prey in there and all that right. fun jazz and stuff right. so it's like it's at that point it's like okay is it really just like oh an actual witch or are you guys just like keeping the story alive and beating a dead horse. Right. Right. Um, so from hauntedplaces.org, here are some of the stories and comments that struck me the most. The first one is from a user named Nikki, and it was posted on November 3rd of 2014. She says on Halloween night, I and my boyfriend and a few friends had went around walking down the road and trails. And we had got to right before the pond where we was looking up on that trail next to the pond We got chased by the big dog and we ran straight to the truck, turned around and the animal was gone. We thought we was crazy. I'm happy we are not the only ones that seen it. So she commented after a couple of the people who said they'd seen a big dog that chased them like to their car. And then when they turned around, the dog was gone. So that was in comment to that, which was interesting because, you know, like I said, people have said, you know, hellhound. Um, other people have said that there was a woman that did live there, but she was living in there in like the sixties and she had a big black dog. And of course they've both died since then. And so some people think it's her black dog, just protecting the property, even in the afterlife. Yeah. So like, I mean, and it's like, I get that. And like I said, when you're out in the middle of the freaking woods, in the middle of the night, obviously th- thinking something is out here, your mind is going to trick you into seeing something right. that might not actually be there. For all they know, it could have been a deer. I mean, maybe. Uh, deer are a lot bigger than dogs, but yeah. Yeah, true. But again, your mind makes you see what you want to see, what it wants you to see. Yeah. Uh, a person by the username Secrets, which later down the message board, she revealed her name to be Brandy. Um, she posted on September thir- 13th of 2015. This was a great comment. Very well written in terms of story. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate it is, but. It says, Torbit, the infamous witch of Hines Road. We all have heard the legend. Some say they've seen her. Maybe they have. Maybe they think they have. She wasn't the only witch that resided in these woods. I visited the location on several occasions and have yet seen her full beauty. She's not very trusting. I sometimes go just to sit by the lake and talk to her. Across from the lake, the area which is known to be the place where her cabin sat, is where I saw my first possible sighting, but only in apparition form. It brightly lit up a vast area in the woods, and as I started up the hill to go in, it diminished and went away. Those who were with me quickly ran to our vehicle, screaming for me to come, but I stood there. I waited for her. I asked her to please come back. She wouldn't. I have photos of orbs covering the lake's area, faces can be seen through the trees, and the figure of a woman's dress can be seen beside me. There were no legs or feet. EVP has picked up sounds of nature and in unison sounding as though they were telling us to go back. I've heard screams of a woman and of young. I have felt touches. I've been slapped and pushed. I still go back to visit. I still ask her to show herself to me. I have not went into the cave. She's not there. The lake is where she stayed the most. If you want to see her, you'll see her there. Torbett had emerald green eyes and long black hair. She was young and beautiful. If you see anything but, then you just aren't seeing her. The area is now the private property of someone, and having a vehicle parked on the side of the road definitively draws attention. The police have been called to me twice. I now have someone take and leave me. I spend as much time as I can there until I feel she wants me to leave. People have said they feel like she went with them since their visit, but do not be in fear. It is not her. She will not leave her mountain. Hmm. Yeah, like I... Yeah, like... I mean, I get it if you want to, like, pretend that's how it was or whatever and stuff, but, like, I I don't know. Like, I really can't say yes or no because it's, like, I I really do believe that people see certain things and stuff, obviously, and I really do believe that, like, 
that kind of stuff is out there. So you can't really say yes or no about it and everything. But at the same time, if that's what she believes she saw, then that's great. Do I think she should be trespassing on private property right now? No, but because that's how you get yourself shot in Alabama. But so get in trouble in general is trespassing. Yeah. But yeah, no, I just, I don't know. Like it, it really does seem like there is something out there that people do believe in. And if they do, that's great and everything. But at that point, it's like, I mean, because it's like everybody has their own urban legends. Like you got to kind of keep those alive. Yep, it's true. Uh, okay, the next one came from user Serena, and it was posted on November 3rd of, two, of 2016. She says, uh, the lake everyone speaks of, nicknamed Blood Lake, is not the lake where the children's bodies were. The water level is low now, and you can see several old tires spread around. The witch's house was not across from that lake. The lake where the children were taken is on private property and is not exposed from the road. It's across the street from where the original Clayton house was and is spring-fed. It never goes dry, and it never overflows. The Clayton property is about a mile before the exposed lake with the tires on the left. There's a lot of brush and vegetation, so it's not readily exposed. The caves you speak of are old coal mines and very dangerous. Packs of coyotes live in there and take their prey there to eat, he said. The mm -hmm. odor is from rotten prey and odor emitted from the actual coyotes. It's terribly rank. There are many old coal mines often mistaken for caves in the area, but please be careful when exploring. You may see coyotes, black bears, and there's a lone black panther that roams the woods, but typically is not aggressive. The coyotes appear domesticated, but when you approach, they will attack. I have always found this story interesting and have visited several times, both in the day and night. So right, this so is someone saying, sorry, I know I interrupted. Uh, this is someone saying that, um, you know, the place that everybody says is the place is actually not the place. Yeah. Which is interesting. So, okay. So if there's supposedly a, just a random ass panther just chilling in this, in these woods, that would explain the dog. That would explain the, the coyotes dog. too. Yeah. Or one of the coyotes like that would definitely explain it and stuff. Um, yeah. So that would definitely explain it. Uh, but like, my question is, is like, why does this person feel like that this is where it is instead of where everybody else says it is? Like, this is where it is instead of where this local legend says it is. So from the videos that I was watching, because obviously I couldn't just fly down Alabama and check mm -hmm. it out myself. Um, from the videos I saw, most people, there's this giant pond when you drive up right against the road and everyone says, oh, this is Blood Lake. But what they're saying is that's not actually where it was. It was in a different spot than where everybody thinks it is. Yeah. So, um, which would make sense to me because that would, the size of that particular pond, uh, it would take a lot of children to dye the, the, the stuff, the, the water red. Like, yeah, a lot. Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, user Amy on October, uh, October 30th of 2014 posted, my grandmother lived around the corner from Heinz Road, and I would play there as a little girl. Yes, there are steps and a foundation where a house once stood, and buttercups bloom all around the foundation in the spring. Devil worshippers used to go up there at night and burn torches and kill animals. My granny said that when she was a little girl, they used to fish in the pond all the time. The house that was there burned sometime in the 1930s. It was owned by a family, and that is why it still sits vacant, without anything else being built on it. I saw the black dog several times when I would play there as a child. It would keep its distance from me, but I would watch it as if it was guarding me. So somebody else who saw the black dog. Um, but again, you know, I'm, it's interesting because of all these varying reports saying, well, I used to play there as a kid and there was yeah, a right. house that burned down it. in the 30s, but it was a family's home. And Yeah, or like, this is what it is. Like, because right. it's really easy, especially on the internet, for somebody to be like, oh, yeah, I totally do that. Or I totally knew that, blah, 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 and everything. Mm -hmm and stuff so it's like i totally like see i guess where that is right because it's like oh well i like it's so easy for somebody to be like oh yeah no i used to live in the house oh yeah no i grew up on that property oh yeah right. no i was sitting there doing that and everything but it's really and it's like if all these reports came out at the same time and like they were all posted to different places and that'd be one thing but like with them all posted in a reddit forum like it's really easy for somebody to look at it and be like oh yeah totally like this this and this right yeah and stuff like be able yeah. to like go digging before you actually do it and have them do it right and like know what to say agreed 
Uh, there's one last one, and this was probably one of the more interesting ones for me. Um, this user Josh, and he posted on November 27th of 2018. He said, I'm 18 and I've lived in Gasden for years and going to middle school at Emma Sansom. We always heard of the Heinz Road Witch from our parents and friends. The older folks call her Torbit. During high school years, me and my friends have visited many times. Sometimes the house is there and sometimes there's no sign of anything. It's insane. Me and my best friend went up there last time my junior year before getting to the cave, pond, or house. We found a big black dead pit bull that we assume was either left by Torbit or the devil worshippers that often gather there at night. I've not been back since, and I hear they paved and redone part of the road. I might need to make another trip up there soon. Be wary not to turn off your car, as oftentimes her friend's cars wouldn't start back up for 15 or so minutes. So it really makes me feel like... That, especially because a lot of these stories are like, oh, I heard about it from my parents or I heard about it from my grandparents or something. It really makes me feel like, um, like, oh God, how is that? How how am I supposed to phrase this? It really makes me feel like like these parents told these kids these things to be like, oh, well, if you're not careful, blah, 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 and everything, like the witch will come get you and stuff. And it's like, but at the same time, if you tell kids these horror stories, like, especially at a certain age, they're going to want to go check it out. So and, like, a lot of, like, the kids, like, disappearing, like, if any kids have disappeared, like, w- recently around those woods and stuff, it's probably because, you know, all the coal mines that are confused as caves and coal mines are dangerous. Yes, they are. They're very right. dangerous. So, it's, like, there's probably some kids just chilling out in a coal mine. It's possible. Yeah. But um, it, I, that's what this really sounds like. Well, and I think it's interesting that there are some reports that even though they're from very different people who agree with some things and they don't agree with others, there's a few consistencies from people that are saying, you know, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this, I experienced this. Um, And the biggest fear seems to be more behind the um, whatever rituals are going on up there that are killing animals more than the witches, witch herself. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I feel like the, because woods are full of animals, so the animals are killing more than the actual witch. People may see, like, their eyes trick them at night in the moonlight and everything. Like, like. Right. It, 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 or, you know, it could actually be a witch. Like, it could actually be a witch that's killing everybody. Yeah. It could like, be. Like, I mean, who freaking knows? We don't know. That. You know, for a long time, it was believed that bathing in the blood of children and virgins kept you well, young. Elizabeth Balfour, like, I think yeah. the place would say her name. Like, she was like the, like, yeah, she used to, like, kill virgins and, like, bathe in their blood. Yeah. Yeah, she would hire on handmaidens with the intent of killing them to bathe in their blood. Yep. Yeah, and, like, their families knew. They were like, oh, crap. Well, we can't exactly say no. So, nice knowing you. Right. Right. <laughs> Like, so, I mean, Um, it wouldn't be the first time, like, somebody in history has done that because that's actually a really, that's actually a real thing that actually has happened and stuff. But, like, at the same time, when you're doing something and your mind is playing tricks on you, like, right? I mean, this witch could have been a real person. She honestly really could have been a real person. And then just the... It 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 also depends, though, because, you know, there's varying accounts of when the time was, right? Yeah. And the further inland you get from the coast, like, you know, heading from east to west in the United States, you know, the longer it took a lot of those legends to get there a lot. And the longer it took for them to be a little more on the modern side, too. You know, um, in terms of us, we didn't really start having cities, you know, in Washington until all the railroad tracks were done. Yeah. Um, and so for them to, you know, not be keeping accurate records even in say the 1930s isn't really all that surprising. Exactly. So, um, but ultimately every place has an urban legend and sometimes it's created to scare children into behaving. Sometimes it's meant as a warning and sometimes the stories are true. Do you think Torbid, the witch of Heinz road existed? Did she really murder children and bathe in their blood? Was she burned alive in her home? And if she was, was she alone? What do you think? Thank you for listening to True Crime and Chill. For more information, including case notes, photos, and sources, please visit our website at truecrimeandchill.com. You can also stay connected with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. 
Look for new episodes from us each week on Tuesday.